But, you know, the big news, of course, is what happened yesterday with the Supreme Court. Back in September, Jack Smith went to the Supreme Court and said, you know, if you want to rule on any of these crazy things that Donald Trump is claiming, like his immunity claim, do it now. And they said, no, nah, we'll wait for the lower courts. And so we had several months of just kind of grinding through the D.C. Court of Appeals uh, until the D.C. Court of Appeals in a unanimous decision uh, one of the judges, a notorious conservative, all said, come on, are you crazy? A president can kill his political opponent and not, not be prosecuted for it? Seriously? But finally, you know, yesterday, uh, it had reached the point where they couldn't procrastinate any longer. They'd given Donald Trump as much time as they could. And so they just put on hold basically all of his trials, with the possible exception of the Stormy Daniels uh, you know, election interference, hush money cover-up trial in New York that Alan, Alan, Alvin Bragg is pursuing. Um, but other than that, I, in all of his other cases, he's claiming presidential immunity. Now, he can't claim that in the Stormy Daniels case because he wasn't president when he paid her off. But uh, he is going to be claiming that in, uh, and has said that he's claiming that in all of his other cases. We know that this stopped the one before Judge Chutkin. So here we have four or possibly five members of the U.S. Supreme Court putting their thumb on the scale of the election for Donald Trump. And in fact, they said, you know, we're not even going to hear this for seven weeks. We're, we'll, we'll hear this at the end of April. So maybe we'll issue a ruling in the, at the end of June, which means that Donald Trump's trials are not going to happen before the election. I mean, let's just be clear about this. It's, it's conceivable if the court moves a little more quickly, but I, you know, it's obvious that what, you know, the, the six Republicans on the court, three of whom used to be lawyers for the Republican party, Brett Kavanaugh, John Roberts, and uh, Amy Coney Barrett were all lawyers for the GOP in 2000 when they all helped put together the briefs on the Bush v. Gore case where the Supreme Court intervened and handed the election to a Republican because Sandra Day O'Connor wanted to retire. Her husband had Alzheimer's. She wanted to retire, and she didn't want Al Gore appointing her replacement. She wanted George W. Bush to re, re, appoint her replacement, and she got her wish. And then when we looked back, when the New York Times and these other newspapers looked back at what happened down in Florida, they found that, you know, at that kind of the last minute, Catherine Harris had decided that those ballots coming out of black neighborhoods where the crappy dysfunctional voting machines were, where the, uh, the these punch card machines, where the where the people had written on the card Al Gore, in addition to punching or trying to punch the Al Gore button, she decided that those were spoiled because somebody wrote on the card. And she threw out like 48,000 votes. George W. Bush won by a little over 500 votes, 537 if I, my recollection is correct. So this will be the second time in the last 25 years that the U.S. Supreme Court has intervened in a presidential election with the clear and obvious intent of handing that election to a Republican president. I, this is just shocking. And, and, you know, the shock waves are echoing across the internet. Of course, the, the right-wingers are just giddy about it. Oh, yeah, our fascist, we love this guy. You know, let's, let's just remember that, you know, since the Supreme Court was taken over by Republicans in the 1970s, they tell us that corporations are persons with rights under the Bill of Rights. They tell us that when morbidly rich people or massive corporations bribe politicians, that's merely First Amendment free speech. They rule that American women and girls must live under rules established by a 17th century witch-burning judge. They repeatedly knock down the rights of people living in red states to vote. They make it harder for unions to function. They gutted Obamacare. They ruled it's okay to discriminate against gay people. They flooded our nation with guns. They encourage monopoly. They put shackles on the EPA, ruling that it can't regulate carbon dioxide. And now they're doing everything they can to get Donald Trump back into office. So that Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito, who are both in their 70s, Alito, if, if my recollection is correct, Alito is 73 and Thomas is 77, um, so that they can retire confident in the knowledge that they'll be replaced by somebody even crazier and more right-wing than them. I mean, it's, I think it's really important to keep in mind that the only reason Sarah, Sandra Day O'Connor, the deciding vote 
in Bush v. Gore, the only reason that she granted cert in that case, the only reason that she wanted to hear that case was because her husband had just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she wanted to be able to stay home and treat him, take care of him. She had to retire from the court and she did not want to be replaced by a Democrat, as I mentioned just a minute ago. The uh, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, Richard Signorelli, said, quote, the Supreme Court will prematurely hear a completely frivolous claim that if sustained would allow any president to commit crimes with almost unbridled immunity. This delay in his federal January 6, this will delay his federal January 6 trial indefinitely. It's a political and traitorous decision from a totally discredited Supreme Court. Jack Smith laid it out. He, he wrote, you know, a, a brief, a letter, a whatever you call it, to the Supreme Court. He said, quote, the charged crimes start, strike at the heart of our democracy. The public interest is in a prompt trial. At its, uh, that interest is in, at its zenith, where, as here, a former president is charged with trying to subvert the electoral process so he could remain in office. The nation has a compelling interest in the prompt resolution of this case. In all criminal cases, delay can be fatal to a key, achieving just outcomes. Delay in the resolution of these charges threatens to frustrate the public interest in a speedy and fair verdict, a compelling interest in every criminal case, and one that has unique national importance here. But, you know, the, the Republicans on the court don't care. I, I, I think it's important to, care, to, to remember that the stakes are huge, that, that Donald Trump didn't just rape E. Jean Carroll, damaging her life and mental health. He raped America as well. He packed his cabinet with such corrupt billionaires that five of them were referred by their own staffs to the Justice Department for prosecution. In April 2020, when he learned that most of the people dying of COVID were black people in blue states, he ended America's lockdown and began pushing to get people back to work. As a result, America had more COVID deaths as a percentage of our population than any other developed country on earth. He stirred up religious and racial hatred and encouraged Nazis and racist militias. He devastated the EPA, pushing out over half of their scientists. He cut taxes on his morbidly rich peers, producing an $8 trillion addition to our national debt, more than any president in history. He put three radicals on the Supreme Court and several hundred crackpot, unqualified judges on the federal bench. He sucked up to Putin and trash-talked our Democratic allies. He tried to destroy NATO and promises to finish the job if he's back in office next year. And he empowered religious fanatics who are now on a campaign to outlaw abortion and birth control, working to destroy our entire public school system and stirring up hatred against the queer community. And now six corrupt Republicans on the U.S. Supreme Court are going out of their way to give him the delays that he desperately needs to stay out of jail and continue his campaign to end our American way of life. And even if or when they rule against Trump, Trump will have won because he got the delay. That's all he needed. Even if they rule against him, he's good. You know, the bottom line here is that if Democrats make it through this election intact, if we can take back the House, take back the House, yeah, hold the Senate and hold the White House, our first order of business next year needs to be imposing a code of ethics on the Supreme Court. Clarence Thomas, at the very least, should be recusing himself here. This case has to do with January 6th. His wife was an active participant. She was one of the, she was one of the co-conspirators. There's a, a broad belief that she's co-conspirator number six that Jack Smith identified in his, in his uh, prosecution document against Donald Trump. But Clarence Thomas won't recuse himself. He's one of the most corrupt Supreme Court justices literally in the history of America. Taking bribes, taking money, taking vacations, taking trips on super yachts, hanging out with billionaires every year, him and Sam Alito. That's incredible. I, it's just boggling, mind boggling.